Welcome to Sweet Tea Messages. We are continuing our testimony series on how Elohim granted those before us and even present their breakthrough. Today, we have a special message for you on the testimony and the life of Joseph. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey you! Yeah, hi! Thank you for taking the time out of your busy life to listen to this message. (laughs) I just want to greet you and I hope you're having a good day so far or night whenever you hear this. Today we're going to talk about the life of Joseph. And before I even go any further, I'm just going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to intervene in this little session. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you, giving you thanks, giving you praise for your goodness towards us. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your keeping care towards us. And Heavenly Father, as we're about to study your word, as we're about to explore the life of Joseph, your servant who has gone before as an example for us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit and allow your Holy Spirit to remove the veils from our eyes that we can see clearly you know, beyond the words that we can open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will help me to deliver this message to your people, that it can be a blessing and that it can bring life, it can bring hope, it can bring joy, peace, and whatever else you have in mind. Bless us all again. In your precious name I pray. In Yeshua's name. All right. So, Joseph. The Joseph that I'm going to talk about is Jacob's son. We can learn about Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 all the way through chapter 50 and we all know that joseph was the 11th son of jacob he was the first son of rachel the wife one of the wives that jacob had um, that he really loved and when we look at we're going to focus on Joseph so we get introduced to Joseph as being the son of Jacob's old age and because he was the son of Jacob's old age he had a special love in his heart for Joseph why is my voice changing all of a sudden <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Joseph, we see him first as being someone who was loved by his parents, but not necessarily those who were around him. His brothers, they were not so fond of him mainly because they saw that their father gave him special attention they it was obvious that Jacob loved Joseph more out of all of them and I mean if I was in that situation (laughs) if I was okay if I was Joseph I mean I wouldn't mind you know daddy loving me more But if I was not, if I was like Reuben or one of the other brothers, 
I probably would get jealous too because I just think that parents should love all their children equally. Although that's not always the case. You know, there are times when parents, you know, prefer um, one child over another. Probably not intentionally, but because we're humans. And being humans, we are flawed. And our logics and our, our thinking and everything about us is not perfect so we can try to treat all our children equally but the truth of the matter is you may love one more than the other and that brings me back to the heart of our heavenly father our father in heaven as a parent um does he love anyone else more than anyone does he choose someone else over us probably not because when we read the scripture i'm not going to say probably not it's more so no because when we read the scriptures we see his heart for humanity we see the vilest of sinners getting the same amount of love the same amount of investment for example like i would think that judas would be a child that he wouldn't love like in my opinion right judas that betrayed the messiah <clears throat> let's pick judas so judas might not be your favorite child because i mean he was a thief he pretended like he was for him he pretended like he was a follower he was there when all the parables were being spoken all the explanations he he got a first hand you know interaction with the messiah and the almighty could have said you know what judas i know you're gonna betray him but i don't really want you around me i don't really want you to you know be near my son so be over there he still gave judas a chance he knew that he was the son of perdition but he still showed judas love he still showed compassion towards him and this was evident because when judas would help himself with the money bag he never embarrassed him he did, he wasn't like judas i know you i know you stealing my money like he made him in charge of treasury and he knew that he was a thief the messiah knew judas was a thief but yet still he still gave him the opportunity to choose to do good but judas made a decision so that doesn't mean that he loved judas less than any of us you know but yeah our heavenly father is not like our earthly parents the scripture says when our mothers and fathers forsake us he will pick us up he will take us up you know what that means that means that in reality he knows that there will be times in our lives where our very parents will not meet the standard of love that we want in our lives the the, the acceptance our parents will not be there a hundred percent to validate us and who we are in in the messiah and so he's saying look your parents are flawed they're gonna forsake you they're gonna abandon you but i am here as your heavenly father i'm here to take you i accept you i will not reject you so it just goes to show that we can't um completely rely on any anyone once they're humans to expect complete acceptance from them and expect that they were gonna be they're gonna always love us and they're gonna always treat us right that is not the case 
and we see here with Joseph we're not straying we're not straying at all we're just exploring the scriptures like when we read a verse it can go into so many different avenues so we are talking about Joseph's brothers how they hated him that's what the scripture said they hated him and they would not speak peaceably unto him so that means that every time joseph was around they're like get out of here or they would speak harshly or they would be disrespectful to him they would not you know they would definitely show their disdain um of him but i i like reading along the scriptures that did not break joseph's spirit he was still happy he was still joyful he was still loving to his brothers although they treated him that way i never saw that joseph had a bad heart towards them and that is a good example for us even when people are unkind to us it doesn't give us any license to be unkind to them the scripture tells us not to render evil for evil and it also says that if we have enemies and they hunger or they're in trouble whatever it is you know we should feed them we should clothe them because we're gonna heap up poles of fire in their head you're not gonna do it intentionally to say okay I want to heap up coals of fire in your head so I'm gonna I'm gonna feed you and clothe you no but it just goes to show that be kind to those who are not kind to you you know your heavenly father is judging you based on your reaction he's not gonna judge you based on what they did to you he's gonna judge you based on how you responded so you have a responsibility to react in a way that can please and will please your heavenly father that's a part of healthy boundaries it's a part of having control over your thoughts your actions and the choices that you make it is not because of someone you can't go to your heavenly father and say okay she made me you know cuss her out she made me sin she made me lie she made no you're responsible for your actions they did what they did but you are responsible for how you treat them back so that's just a side note joseph i don't see where joseph um treated them in any less way than he would his brothers and like joseph i see that he had a positive attitude and he just had a good heart to begin with i remember reading a scripture and it says i think it's the words of yeshua when he said that a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit fruit did i say fruit anyways <laughs> so it it all boils down to the tree what kind of tree am i i don't want to you know paint my fruits so that other people can think that it's good fruits because a lot of times we do that we, we we do whitewash on our fruits and it looks good but it's really rotten on the inside but we have to make sure that the tree itself the tree that consists of the roots and the leaves and the branches that has to be good your roots where are you getting your source from where are you what are you connected to that is influencing your life who are you connected to that that is influencing your life whether for good or for evil because you know the tree gets 
its substance from the ground and the leaves that are extended from the tree the branches and the leaves they too have their parts to play and it just goes to show that again whatever we do it will come to light it will show forth an apple tree must bring forth apple apples it cannot try to force oranges it cannot try to force any other fruit it will bring forth whatever it is that is the law of trees i guess and sowing and reaping whatever you sow that's what you will reap it's a law in the realm of the spirit and of the natural it's a law it must fulfill it must be fulfilled sorry so joseph in the beginning we see that he had a good heart and later on in the chapters we see this manifesting but we're not there as yet so we're right where joseph gets a dream oh my <laughs> joseph gets this dream that he decides to share with his family and <laughs> i'm gonna read it because it's so funny and joseph dreamed a dream and he told him I'm sorry, Genesis 37, verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Wow. Wow. So, <laughs> he dreamed a dream, and they hated him yet the more. You're probably wondering, like, what? But... They were already jealous of him and a dream that he gave. Okay, so the dream that he gave them was about sheaves. He said that he dreamt that they were binding sheaves in the field and a sh his sheave um, stood upright and all the other um, sheaves bowed before his sheave. So, and he, I think he got a, no, he got another dream, not I think, he got another dream that talked about the sun and the moon and seeing 11 stars and all the stars and the moon reverenced him or bowed before him. And it was as clear as crystal. Because the 11 stars represented the brethren, the brothers, while the sun and the moon represented his parents. So they were like, boy, your mama, you, me, your mama and I are going to bow before you. What, what kind of dream is that? That That is from the devil. That, that can't be, you know, from our heavenly father. No, no, no. Bow before, no. And like... It can be, it can mean both um, ways where one, they don't believe in worshiping, you know, idols and stuff. They probably think that, you know, they're going to literally bow before him and worship him. Like that would be a form of idolatry, which they were completely against being the chosen people although they did not get the commandments as yet but that wasn't something that was in their custom to bow and, and and worship people but a lot of times we get dreams and we get visions from our heavenly father and sometimes probably it's from our the desires of our hearts and it just goes to show like we can look at it to say you know you are to be careful who you share your dreams with who you share your um vision with you don't want to share it with someone who already hates you 
because he told them the dream and they hated him even more. And yet he told them another dream. Like, Joseph, get a hint. I mean, <laughs> you would think that he would keep it to himself, but he still, he was so innocent. He was 17 years old. I mean, you can't expect he just probably loved his family so much that he didn't care that they hated him but sharing you know these things with people at times you know you want to i think the sharing of it it's for proof of what will happen and what the heavenly father will bring forth so him sharing the dream with them i mean if he had kept it to himself it would be different they would not they were like oh i had no idea and but the fact that he told them the dream when it would be manifested they can look back and say oh my goodness he did say that he did tell us that we were going to bow before him. So the, the, the telling of the dream was for them to see the manifestation of it. So it's to forewarn them, look, you know, I have a calling on my life. But I think he told them innocently, you know, for them to actually understand the level of calling on his life to help him in some way i don't know why joseph you know shared it but it was good that he shared it because they would you know see what's the future they would even though they didn't believe it but at least they would say oh my he did say that we were gonna bow before him but, you know, back to the point of um, not sharing with everyone everything all the time. Some dreams are meant, you know, for you to wait and see the manifestation and say, this is what is happening. Because... I remember from personal experience how, well, not so personal, personal, but I remember a family member of mine wanting to do something and the person shared it with people, so many people. I'm like, you don't need to tell everybody, just do what you have to do and, and get it over and I have this to do, I have that to do. and, and, and the person told friends and, and so forth and in the end nothing worked out I was like what nothing worked out I'm like you have to be careful who you share your dreams your plans with because not everyone have the same heart towards you as you do for them not everyone wants to wish you well not everyone wants to see you prosper. So we have to be careful who we share parts of our lives with. Especially things that the Almighty laid on our hearts. Yes, we can share them. But ask the Almighty who and to set up the appointment for who you're to share them with because sometimes you share it with the right person and they just jump on it and they give you the resources they that's that's who you must tell things they they have ideas to say yes go for it they can support you but if you know that it's somebody who's gonna tear you down if you know that it's somebody who, you know, don't mean you well, don't. Don't even think about it. Just say, you don't have to say anything at all. 
Pierre. Joseph, he had, you know, a pure heart, an innocent heart. And he would not think that his brothers would any at all devise any wickedness towards him. Because they were brothers. I mean, we brothers, brothers from the same father. I was going to say brother. Anyway. <laughs> But he shared his dreams with them and they hated him more oh my goodness poor Joseph and then the dad gave him a pretty little coat a coat of many colors the scriptures said I can't imagine how many colors I don't know the design if it was plaid if it was I don't know, <laughs> but it was a special coat that he wore, which even made them hate him more. Wow, hey, that rhymed. But anyways, that's the enemy. The enemy comes in various forms. They come in the form of your family. They come in the form of friends. They come in the form of co-workers. But you have to be careful and you have to have the leading of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit does not lead you to open your mouth to say anything to anybody, do not. If the Holy Spirit leads you to say something to a certain person, it's probably the right person. So we have to lean on the Holy Spirit. So... Joseph, such a good lad. All right, so I'm going to close here, but we could have a part two because the life of Joseph, it's so, it's such a big example, especially for young people today. It holds so many sound messages. It holds so many principles that we should learn, that we need to understand, and that we need to apply to our lives, that we can have the same success as Joseph did. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have allowed us to be reminded of today. To learn of you know and to see how you work in our lives Heavenly Father I pray that you will help us you will help us to apply your words you will help us to seek after wisdom to know what to do when to do and how to do it Heavenly Father that your plans can be fulfilled that your plans can be manifested in our lives we don't want to be outside of your will heavenly father and so we seek after you we seek after what your word says we look at these examples in the scriptures and we say look i want to walk that a similar path a path to my destiny in messiah a path that is walking in alignment to the will of my heavenly father please bless us please keep us safe and please help us to be like joseph to have a pure heart and to love you and to treat others right please bless us in your precious name i pray praise his name